the first thing you need to do is to set up a data table that looks like this. So you will list what material you have. There will be six pieces that we're gonna take data on. Uh, list the mass of each piece. And then this is gonna sound weird, but I want you to list the final volume first and the starting volume second. And then we're going to subtract them to find the volume of each piece. In this lab, we're going to find the density of some aluminum pieces. So I've got six chunks of aluminum here, one being the smallest piece, and they each get gradually larger until you get to the sixth piece, which is the biggest of all of them. Um, I've got a scale over here that will help us to find the masses of the pieces. And you notice that it's at zero. And so I'm gonna take piece number one, make sure my scale is at zero and we'll weigh it. And I need you to write down that piece number one has a mass of 1.67 grams in your data table. Okay, let's get piece number two. Check our scale, it reads zero, and this is the mass of piece number two. Come get piece three. Piece three has a mass of this. Write that down in your data table. Piece number four. If at any point I'm moving too fast, feel free to pause the video, but this is the mass of piece number four. Get piece number five, check to see our scale zero. Piece number five has this mass. And last but not least, piece number six has this mass. So as you can see, as the pieces got larger, the masses got larger. To find the density of a material, you not only need its mass, you also need its volume. So I'm gonna use some graduated cylinders here to find the volume of each piece. I've already put some water in the graduated cylinders. Um, because we're going to use what's called a um, water displacement method. The, the metal pieces are not a nice shape um, that we could calculate. And so instead, we're going to use an experimental technique. And if you look really carefully, uh, there appear to be about six milliliters, milliliters of water in this graduated cylinder. And each one, piece number two, cylinder also has exactly six and exactly six milliliters and exactly six, so that each one was pre-filled to exactly six milliliters. Let that focus up a little bit. So we're gonna start off with six milliliters in our graduated cylinder. And what I want you to do is in your data table right now, write in 6.0 milliliters as your starting volume for each piece. Okay, I'm gonna take piece number one and I'm gonna put it in the water and we'll watch what happens. So piece number one is in, the material, is in the water right now and now the volume of the water appears to be about 6.7. Well, let's let that focus in again. Yep, about 6.7 milliliters because you always read from the bottom of that water curve. The bottom of the curve, it's called a meniscus, and you always read from the bottom. So record 6.7 as your beginning volume for piece number one. Now, in order to find the volume of the piece, so when the aluminum went in, the water level rose. So that change in, from the beginning to the ending volume is the volume of the aluminum itself. So if we take the 6.7 and we subtract out six milliliters, that will give you the volume of the aluminum piece number one, and it will be 0 0.7 milliliters. So write 0 0.7 as the volume of your piece for piece number one. Let's come over here to piece number two, do the same thing, drop it in, we'll wait for the bubbles to finish, and then I'm gonna let you read the volume of this one. So that's piece number two. Piece number three, Take piece number three here. We'll stick it in. We'll let the bubbles clear out um, and take a guess at 
your volume for piece number three. All right, here we go, piece number four. Pop that in there. And you're reading the volume from the bottom of the meniscus on the graduated cylinder there. If you need time, feel free to pause the, the video. Now we're over here at piece five. We'll put that in. Let the bubbles come to rest here. And let's see if I can turn this a little bit, give you a better look at the lines. And then last but not least, number six. So we'll put that one in there. Let the bubbles come to a rest and we'll take a look at the water level and read from the bottom. If you have difficulty reading any of them, just make your best guess. All right, those are all of our volumes for our aluminum pieces. There's something interesting about piece number three that I want you to see. Take a look at that. What's on top of the metal right there? How did it get there? And what effect do you think that has on your data? If I shake it, it goes away. Do you think that our data got better or worse?